Howdy. This is my perfected doodad tool. I can't think of a way to improve on it now after so many iterations. So I ordered this part and it arrived yesterday from China with a custom uh, one half twenty threading here on the end uh, so that that um, goes with my spinner tool and screws on that. So um, I'm going to assemble it here and show you the parts that you'll need to make for yourself, the parts that I ordered. Um, what arrived in the mail yesterday was this housing bracket and this ball screw with the custom end. Um, I also ordered this uh, set of, of uh, it's a ball bearing thrust bearing that um, works better than the bronze one since I was ordering stuff uh, from overseas and these cost a dollar and 16 cents each. I got six of them uh, for seven dollars you know, in this packet. Alternately, if you want to go to the hardware store and get a bronze one, it'll cost you about four dollars for one. Uh, this works probably slightly better. Uh, it may fall apart on me and I may go back to a bronze one. Who knows? Either way, um, I'll list the dimensions of this. Um, the one part that you'll need to make for yourself is something to use as a handle. And since we're going to be making um, I said one part, multiple parts. Since we're going to make a, a spacer out of this one inch tubing, if you lop off a little bit extra, you can um, take it and, and bolt it to this bracket, and you'll have many options for using that as a handle, either with a, um, you know, a dowel that goes through here, and you can turn it that way, or just take a crescent wrench that you'll have in your kit, and you can get at it from either side and put plenty of torque on it from either side as a handle like that. Um, this bracket is designed and built for this. It slides right on. And um, these screws are just under 25 millimeters long, standard M5, uh, standard pitch, metric M5. Um, and so, so that's on the um, Thrust bearing will fit nicely. You can see how that works. Right. And this, I just cut this to be the width of this block and then randomly marked, uh, you know, two holes. Don't have to be that accurate. And um, these are roughly what 35 millimeters long 30 these are 38 um, 35 would do it because you're going to buy them in five millimeter increments probably I shortened these from 40 but if you put that together and so that is the top of this tool and if I take my crescent wrench, I've got a nice handle that I can turn. Now there's a good bit of mass in this. This weighs five ounces. Um, and I'm probably going to lop this off uh, by taking it and cutting from here down to here. And just lop that that part off because all the way around um, like so because uh, I can do that with a metal saw um, don't have to just just something you can do to save weight this part is um, our spacer before I put that on this is a square nut 
um, that fits inside the spacer just enough so that it can't turn. You don't have to do the square nut and square spacer if you don't want to go to the trouble. You could just take a length of black pipe, it's a little heavier, a little beefier, and it will work just fine as a spacer. This is roughly eight and a half inches long, and um, uh, you know that would work. Um, it may break more of the stud bolts that you're removing because if you're really torquing on this and there's nothing to keep the center from spinning as well, you may be twisting the bolt as you're pulling on it and you're more likely to break it. So I'm a believer in making this um, keep that from turning. This was a, a 38 cent square nut that I bought from the hardware store and then I took a, um, a one half 20 tap and tapped it and it basically destroys every third thread so that um, if you look at it, I don't know if this camera can catch it, but you'll see that the, the new threads that were cut, I've only got five usable threads out of this, um, this whole nut. So it's weakened, but it doesn't have much of a job to do. Once this is, is on here, and I'm going to add um, red Loctite when I assemble this finally. But you want to you want to put this on here and crank it as hard as you can so that this is permanently affixed to the tool. Um, so that when you're cranking on this, um, it'll be held against the rock and the square tubing, since it's held against the rock, will keep the center shaft from rotating since the bolt is attached to that. So, um, the little retaining screw here is optional keeps you from being able to drop from, from dropping the tool because if you tap this um, and put a screw in here it's more work but I think it's worth it um, then this can't get past the square nut so you could have a tether at this end and you wouldn't accidentally drop this you could also just drill a hole and put some bailing wire through there at the corner and it would also keep it from going past that if you had something, just any obstruction in the corner. Okay, um, So this tool is almost assembled. At this end, um, this is the standard uh, end for the original use of this ball screw, which is a part of a CNC machine. Um, I took a washer and drilled a hole in it and swaged some 16th inch wire rope and then put some three layers of uh, shrink um, insulation over it so that you don't get the burrs from that. Uh, this is fancy. Uh, you could use uh, eighth inch nylon through that hole. You could use lots of other things you could do that aren't as fancy as this. This is a steel spacer. Uh, it cost me two bucks and steel is not the lightest thing but I didn't uh, search around long enough to find a, a nylon one that would work. You could probably find one. They didn't have one at the hardware store where I was. And so, um, and that is, um, what is that? It's a quarter inch thick. A standard washer and a quarter inch thick spacer will end just shy of this notch at the end. This is a 30 cent uh, retaining clip um, and this retaining clip is a 10 millimeter or uh, it's a 9 millimeter uh, diameter on the inside. Um, they do require a special tool, um, a circlip wrench. Every uh, auto mechanic in the United States has one of these in the shop so you may have to borrow one. Stop by one on the way from home from the hardware store and have them do this for you. Um, if you do it yourself and you're not familiar with these, shield your eyes because the little circlip can fly off. But, um, you know, that is going to go on that. I'll show you. It goes on like so. There. Nope. So now that that is on, this can't go anywhere.
yet it can swivel because um, the tangling factor is a big, a big annoyance on the, the cliff side. And so I designed this so that this can rotate freely uh, without getting bound up. Okay. So that is ready to go. You add a spinner tool. The spinner tool is is pretty simplistic. If you, um, I ordered ten of these inserts um, from eBay from Northwestern Tools uh, eBay store. Uh, if you order just one of them. Uh, I think uh, Global Industrial Parts is, a, is a, a hardware store online where you can get one. You'll pay like nine bucks for one of them. And I think I, these cost me, um, you know, like a buck fifty each by ordering ten of them off eBay. Um, it's tough that some of these parts for, for bolt removal, you really have to buy in bulk to, to save. But um, that's the way things go. So one of those inserts in a in a one half twenty um, coupling nut that I took a hacksaw and shortened it so that I only have the the amount of thread that I need to screw it onto the um, the little adapter which I don't have in front of me at the moment but um, the SDS drill chuck adapter uh, but that's in a bunch of other videos I've done and so once this is on that is a completed puller tool. Um, and there's a dead bolt on it right now. But um, so if I have this, that's my handle, and I turn this, and it uh, it works.